Hello again people, what is up? I am Patrick. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the switch utility node in Maya. Have you ever wondered uh, sometimes when we start duplicating shaders and we start getting a very hard organization of scenes when our shade, when our objects get more and more and you have objects that are sort of belonging to the same kind of surface properties and same materials, reflectance uh, and all that but the only thing that's different is uh, the color of the objects so for example I have like six cars um, in, a, in a car park and out of these six cars two are like gray, uh, three are gray and three are yellow and um, because of the different shaders required for each one of the shaders you have to maintain uh, one shader that is gray Okay, and one shader that is yellow. There's no problem with that, but uh, once you get to uh, you get to the stage where you want to refine, uh, say you want to adjust the eccentricity of the gray one, and then because the yellow one is exactly the same look, it's just that the paint is different color. You have to maintain and and keep up with whatever changes you make twice. So let's say you have like six of the same car paint shader uh, with six different colors. Okay, then you sort of uh, compound that kind of uh, organization skill needed. Then you would start to understand like why this is such a hassle. Okay, <clears throat> so today with this switch shading utility, it would help to make our job a little bit easier. Without this, you can still go around. It's just you know a, a logistic inconvenience. Using switch node, we would be able to just use one shader and then maintain two sets of uh, color for the objects like that okay so we'll just eliminate one shader and then we can adjust everything from one shader okay so let's let's get started so I'm just gonna because I already have this yellow uh, in my swatch I'm just gonna delete this okay so these three spheres are, are, are without shader so I'm just gonna select all of them and apply just bling shader zero one to all of them so the only difference in this example would be the color attribute so I'm gonna hit uh, the map button and just apply a switch utility to, to tell Maya that some objects gonna receive one set of values and another set of um, another few objects are gonna receive another set of values so uh, where do we find this switch uh, utility so uh, when you start you get a create render node okay so let's click that again create render node so it's under um, utilities and then I just need to type switch okay and then I get triple single quad and double switch shading utilities so the difference between them is the data type that uh, Maya is, is expecting in this example color is a three value kind of group right uh, red green and blue Okay, so it's uh, so it's rotate, uh, rotate x, rotate y, rotate z, uh, position x, position y, and position z. So in this case, we need to choose the triple switch. So when I click that, uh, you can see that my swatch turned uh, sort of whitish, and uh, my work area in this hypershade didn't update. So I'm just gonna select this shader and uh, graph input and output. So you, now you see this triple shading swatch uh, switch. Okay, so I'm gonna select that, and this is the interface that we're gonna be working with. So we're telling Maya says uh, saying that there are two sets of colors. So one set of color is the default color, which is now white. So if I hit six on my keyboard uh, to control the viewport, I will be displaying texture. So uh, since there are no exceptions everybody gets applied the default color now so I'm going to switch this guy back to the default gray now everybody switched back to the default gray so this is the exceptions to tell Maya says okay this is a you know this is a bunch of shapes that are not following that should not follow the default value so how do we add shapes in here so what we need to do is find out the names of this guy this guy and this guy so this guy is sphere 4 sphere 2 and Sphere six, so it's two four six. So back in our um, triple shading switch, I'm gonna middle drag sphere two and drop 
drop it here, sphere 4, drop it here, and sphere 6, and drop it here. So this is the list of our objects. So if I want to remove that, I can just right click and remove. Okay, right click and remove. Okay, I'm gonna add this back. So we have 2, 4, 6. Now we're gonna tell Maya what to apply, what color or what shader, uh, what texture to apply. We could bring in a file texture and apply that. Okay, so let's uh, try and bring in a, a checkered texture. So under our 2D texture, I'm gonna bring in, well, let's, let's try a grid texture then. So I'm just gonna create this grid texture. I'm gonna re-graph them again. So the grid, being a 2D texture, it comes with a place 2D placement texture node. Alright? I'm gonna use the output color of this grid. Uh, to as an input to this. So how this is done is uh, right clicking and I'll say out color. I'm gonna connect my out color to. Okay, let's do that again. Uh, on this right arrow here, right click out color, and then uh, connect it to the input uh, other. Okay, okay, we have our out color here. Okay, so just uh, so this is uh, how we're using this connection editor here. So this is the input, which is a list actually, because we have now three objects. So input zero, one, two, which correspondingly, you know, uh, represents sphere two, sphere four, and sphere six. So that these are the entries inside. So we need to expand that. So inside these input zero, one, and two, you have you know out color because this is a um, triple RGB. So triple value type, uh, these valid uh, plugs to connect to are lit up. So we just out color, connect to in triple zero from input zero. And you can see that um, it's being connected. And you can see that uh, now that I, we've connected our first object, uh, the grid pattern uh, texture starts to show up on that sphere. So, continue, so we continue to highlight it to just Highlight to connect, highlight to connect, and it's all done. So now we have two sets of values piped into the same shader that's applied to everybody but these three exceptions, uh, the objects, the shapes that are listed out in, in the exceptions list. So very nice. Uh, so let's continue. Uh, let's say for the other set of uh, spheres we're gonna put like uh, we're gonna put a fractal noise 2d noise maybe so uh, okay that's a little bit more adventurous now okay so this default which stands for these three we can now just middle drag middle mouse drag and release and now we start to see two different sets of colors okay so can we have more than two sets of colors? Of course we can. So we have, let's say uh, now we have a an ocean, uh, a ramp texture. Okay, so I'm, we just dragged out a ramp texture. And out of this list, um, all these are getting the same uh, source, which is the, the grid texture. But now, maybe on the third one, this ramp texture Maybe we're just gonna switch it, uh, change it to a little bit more colorful, uh, red and blue. Maybe that is uh, the color that we're going for, red, green, blue. Okay, and um, right now, again, we're just gonna be using our uh, connection editor, or we could call out the connection editor from here, uh, window connection editor. Okay. So we can load the ramp in on the left side, and P sphere six is the third entry in here. So uh, select this triple switch, reload that on the right side, and the color output out color from the ramp texture, which is on the left side, to the third entry corresponding to P sphere six, which is the last sphere here, and uh, go in and uh, select in triple. Okay, and there you go, you can see that um, on the third, on the last sphere, you can, you have a third input, third kind of texture driving 
the last one okay so that's how we can use switch utility in Maya you can use that in any kind of value uh, as long as it deals with value you can use one single uh, shader to drive to have different kind of outputs using a switch shading node okay the convenience of using this is now that um, as far as Maya is concerned these six spheres are actually the same shader but they are being given different uh, attributes based on the switch textures so what this means for us is we can actually control these shader as just one okay so I can have I can pump up my ending color I can uh, go up my reflectivity so that everybody becomes reflective uh, but they still keep their different colors let's get a render of this I'm gonna change my renderer to mental ray so we can see the smoothing okay so you can see uh, this reflections going on but I can just turn them all off uh, by adjusting just one attribute on one shader okay and render again and you see that the reflection disappears on all of the shaders okay so so that's the convenience uh, of maintaining just one shader and you can do your uh, refinement on your look and change just one set uh, without changing a lot of things so I hope that uh, you, you do see the importance uh, and usefulness of uh, this technique and that uh, you will find it useful in your workflow okay so that's uh, all I have for you now I see you again in the next tutorial bye